So that lady who went skydiving at 104, never married, never had children. I wanna use this woman's story to tie some other things together, okay? Because while I absolutely believe that marriage is a scam, generally, and does not benefit women and literally takes years off of our life, I'm also married. Which some people find that really strange that I can be a feminist who knows it, it is all men. It's all men. My platform to warn women, date men who will literally unalive you um, quickly through actual violence or slowly through your immune system. I've made videos about how much healthier I am now, married, because I have someone who takes care of me, pours into me, loves the crap out of me, cooks for me, like every day, and holds me accountable to my own standard of, of care, the same way I hold him accountable, right? That's what partnership's about. But most marriages are not like this under patriarchy. We're also lied to from our moms and grandmas and other people a lot of the time in magazines and movies and all this crap. Marriage is gonna be this thing and it's gonna be amazing and that it's the best day of our life when for a lot of women, it's their funeral. That's the day their life ends. So I'm not anti-marriage, but I am anti-exploiting women. So any marriage that involves that, I am very much against and will never shut up about that because it's literally killing us. But before I get into that, let's talk about this. Because when I first saw this article, not only that she, I was like, oh cool, she went skydiving. 104, that's amazing. And then when I read yesterday that she died, um, you know, a few days later or whatever, I was like, hmm, is there a man behind this? <laughs> because y'all, if you know my content, I talk about how reckless men are as leaders and so many accidents are because of men and their hubris and their egos and their lack of emotional intelligence, what they could get if they worked on it, but they won't most of the time. Anyway, she went from a lady who just, you know, lived a quiet life, watching, watching MASH reruns. I mean, to be honest, I do not put anyone on a pedestal. We could find out next week this lady is crazy, crazy racist. She treated everyone like crap and is a terrible human being, okay? Just using this as a opportunity for social commentary, okay? Don't put me on a pedestal. Don't put her on a pedestal. Don't put anyone on a pedestal. Anyway. So the reason why she went on this thing is because it's not for some sort of, you know, existential point or whatever. She literally was like, I don't know, it was fun. I did it when I was 100. I want to do it again. <laughs> That's it. And I, the reason why I'm talking about this lady is because I really, I, before, uh, I got married at 42. Up until I met my husband, I was fully prepared to, to be this woman. And honestly, I was okay with it. I mourned. The fantasy. I never really believed in the fantasy to begin with because, um, yeah, my dad cheated on my mom. You know, like divorced parents since I was four years old. Grandparents hated each other. One, one grandma was literally being kept hostage. I mean, I nobody could. I mean, I, I mean, the, I was. I thought I should want to get married, but honestly, I was like, uh, y'all are not convincing me. And so I also knew I was, you know, probably very codependent and was so afraid that I would send her men if I ever did get involved with them that I just. Didn't. I just didn't date. I didn't have my first real boyfriend until I was 36 years old. And this was the life I was living and I was fine with it. The only thing I realized at, you know, in my middle, mid thirties is that I really need to work on community. That was the missing part because I was living like a lone wolf, like a lot of these outdoorsy, you know, mountaineer man, men. Uh, and it was, you know, pretty selfish. But unlike a lot of men who are lone wolf, I did not exploit men in order to live that lifestyle. Anyway, so this was my golden girls. Grace and Frankie, you know, this, 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 this was something I came to terms with. I'm not saying this video is to discourage any women from ever dating again. I'm not um, telling you to just give up. I always had a little bit of hope, but not a lot. I focused on my life, myself, and this being my ending. Because what I didn't want was a man ruining my life, which is what happens <laughs> more often than not. They said when she boarded the plane, you know, she wasn't like, yay! She was like, you know, what's for dinner? Like, she thought it was fun, but she was also kind of like, meh, whatever. And she set a Guinness Book of World Record, right? Meh, okay. She was initially not excited by all this media attention. But thought, okay, maybe I can meet some people. I don't know. When the Drew Barrymore show called, she had like an hour-long chat with them, and then afterwards they asked if she wanted, if she wanted to do an interview, and she was like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> It talks about her upbringing a little bit. She never married or had children, which she long believed had granted her more freedom and adventure. And that's also why she's 104 when she died, y'all, which I'm gonna get into in a minute. It's like she did all these adventures, had a sense of humor, and she like went skydiving with like one of the people taking care of her. You know, like she sounds like she had a good life. And again, I'm not against marriage because the, the women that I know who are married to men who have been working on 
deconstructing patriarchy. And every time I say that, someone will come in my comments saying, yeah, good luck, good luck, good luck, yeah. What I mean by that is them starting to really, really make an effort to understand how much they exploit their wives by default. Okay? Even if they are not meaning to, men are set up to just put stuff on women because that's what they watched growing up. That is the mindset that they were given through so much socialization. And if they are not actively pushing against that default, they're going to do it. So um, they have to be active in their awareness of how much they benefit from marriage, how much they benefit as being a man under patriarchy. And if they're not constantly aware of that, they are going to screw her over. And also men willing to heal any of their childhood trauma or any trauma instead of literally making every single woman pay the price of their refusal to go to therapy. So many of us end up in therapy because one of our parents or both of our parents refused to deal with their stuff. When I was single, People criticize me for talking about feminism and being happy, dying alone, and living my life. Um, because they're like, whatever, it's because you can't get a man. And now that I'm married, I get comments all the time being like, shut up about being single. Who are you to talk? You're married. You don't know what it's like. Oh, uh, yes, I do. I didn't pretty much date anyone until I was 36. And that man, the first person that I fell in love with, which was absolutely not love, tried to unalive me. So believe me, I know what it's like to be alone for a long period of time. And I made peace with that. And I lived the best life because I did not have a man making me center him and his moods and his needs all the time. I lived for me. Men get to do that all the time. Like I said, what I really started to work on was investing more, more, more into my friendships and my community. Because without those things, yeah, I am going to be miserable. And those things are oftentimes so much more rewarding than romantic relationships anyway. So here is why women need to stop defaulting to marriage or at least thinking that they should, and then like hating themselves if they don't. Because even though I was so happy in my life, I always, that little voice in the back of my head, that internalized misogyny patriarchy was like, you're a loser. I'm like, no, but I love my life. No, you're a loser. You know, it's like being at war with yourself. So there's been tons of studies done on this, tons of articles by now, but this one was actually in Fortune Magazine, which is not a feminist magazine. So for them to say this, it's like, whoa. So this came out, or this is uh, January 13, 2023. So just this year. Married men are healthier than everyone else. You know, everyone deserves a wife. <laughs> if only wives got a wife, right? What well, acknowledges that marriage did tend to benefit people in general more because of a sense of belonging, more opportunities for social engagement, reduced feelings of loneliness. They brought up the body's inflammatory process. Loneliness and lack of close relationships with inflammation. They're linking those. Inflammation over a long period can cause, uh, it's associated with heart disease, arthritis, cancers, autoimmune diseases, right? But here's the kicker. If you're a woman married to a man who exploits you all the time, and I'm not even talking about abuse, like physical abuse, emotional abuse. I'm just talking about exploiting you, putting all the mental load, childcare, invisible labor, the weaponizing competence, the gaslighting, the emotional unavailability, all those things, you will feel more alone in a marriage than you would being completely alone. As someone who was single until, you know, for, until I was 42, being single was my default. Until that one relationship at the age, age of 36 that lasted one year where I almost died, and then another one um, at 40 that lasted one year. I have been single my whole adult life. And I'm telling you, nothing is more lonely than being with a man who doesn't see you, doesn't love you, doesn't care about you, because it cuts you off from other people, and yet you're stuck with someone who just doesn't see you. On top of that, women reinforce men's healthy behavior, but they don't do the same. In general, men, like, don't care. They don't invest. They're not like, honey, you should take care of your time. Not only are they slowly unaliving a lot of women, they also, like, don't encourage any healthy behavior. Also, suck up, suck the life out of you so you don't have time for self-care. Same gender relationships, though, Totally different story. Then we have the sandwich generation where women are taking care of their husband, their parents, and their children. Women are also making men's doctor's appointments and aren't making ours. Women are also dying from trying to repair the marriage. And then when we get sick, the men divorce us. Like for real, men are six times more likely to leave you if you get sick. And then if the men get, man gets sick, uh, women will stay with him and then um, also die through their immune system caretaking this man. Because men are oftentimes terrible patients. Grumpy. I don't think you should ever judge yourself or even give up on the idea of romantic love. It was super hard for me to admit to myself that I actually did want that, which is why I kept trying. But I mourned the fantasy and accepted that it may not ever happen. And that gave me peace.